Hello, thank you for joining us. This is the Streaming Advisor, and what we're looking at here is Peacock. Peacock is the sort of highly anticipated new service from Comcast that combines all of its assets into one large app. This is not altogether different looking sort of in its feel than the NBC app, which is still out there on a number of platforms. What it does is it pulls in the content from NBC Universal shows, it pulls in things from like USA, sci-fi, things like that. And it puts it all together. Like you'll see Suits right there. That's an a you know a USA show, Psych. But as you see, it's got a lot of different categories. And there is a lot of content on here. Now, Peacock has a lot of different tiers. What we're going to try to show you in this video is the difference between, say, the free tier and their premium tier. There's two premium tiers, one for about $4.99, one for about $10. The difference is that the, the less expensive one has commercials and the more expensive one doesn't. So for about the price of Netflix, you get a more Netflix-like experience. So we're going to take a look at the TV shows. I'm going to sort of start looking at the difference between if you pay for this and if you get it for free. And the difference can be seen here. See in the corner, the little purple thing? That means that this is a premium show. It's a feather, like, you know, like a peacock feather. Although that doesn't really look like a peacock feather, but hey, you know, whatever you want to do with your branding. But you see, it can get confusing, because Frasier didn't have a peacock feather by it, but that means in this case, you get the first season for free, but you have to pay for the rest of them. So they kind of like make you explore a little bit. And you'll find other shows are like that as well. For instance, you know, Frasier jumped from Cheers. And Cheers is the same way. Season one's for free. The rest you've got to pay for. You know, you know the deal. Well, you know, you're going to have to pay for the rest. <laughs> but... So what they're doing here is they're trying to invite you in and say, hey, remember this good old show that you liked, you know, from the 80s? Apparently they're shooting for the baby boomer generation. But in other cases, shows that don't ha have the feather have every season available free to stream. Obviously the Michael Chiklis show here, The Commish, is one of them. And you know, there's a lot of shows out there, you know, hundreds of them that you can watch without having to pay anything extra but the problem with it is you can never be absolutely sure what is totally free let's see everybody hates chris everybody hates chris is completely open and, you know if you haven't ever seen it, it's a good show it's one of terry cruz's earlier tv shows and you know it's it's solid you get a healthy dose of Saved by the Bell on Peacock here. You might remember in some of the press releases that Peacock is going to have an original show that's a Saved by the Bell reboot of sorts. So they have the original Saved by the Bell series and the college years and Zack's Big Wedding, blah, blah, blah. I was never really into Saved by the Bell, sorry. Um, Leave it to Beaver... Now, this is one that really surprised me, especially in the ads, because this is one of those just, you know, classic 1950s, early 60s era TV shows, you know, complete in black and white. And you know, you'll find a lot of stuff like that on here. I don't know if it's because they wanted to dig into the vault to share things that, you know, they considered old classics worth seeing, or if they were trying to pad the amount of things that they had and, you know, make the service look bigger. But there is a lot there, including the Battlestar Galactica series. This was the reboot of Battlestar Galactica. You have the whole run of this show. This is a really, really good sci-fi show if you've never seen it. And you can just check it all out. It's dark, not for the kids. Now, the original 
app had the Battle Star Galactica Classic series, and so we wanted to look for that, and we don't see it in there. So it does have Battle of Los Angeles. I've never heard of Battle of Los Angeles. So that's sort of how you can get a feel for the TV shows that they have. It's not uniform, like we showed you. Some things have little things, some things don't. And the movies are the same. The movies, for the most part, are pretty straightforward. If it has a feather, you can't watch it for free. If it doesn't have a feather, you can watch it for free. But the caveat in the movies is that everything listed in the movies is not necessarily available for the entire time that you're watching it. I'm going to see if I can find a title that expires. Looks like Dave Chappelle's Block Party is completely available. No strings attached. But let's see something else. Jurassic Park. Perfect. Now you see over there where it says 16 days left to watch? That means that this movie is not going to be on the service forever for free. And there's a number of titles like that. These are things that are maybe playing on the Sci-Fi Channel or one of their other groups. There's another one, The Mummy. 17 days left to watch. Now, if you have the premium, you're going to have more options for things that stay there permanently. But otherwise, you got it there. You got it on your commer- with the commercials. But you'll see that there are a lot of, again, a lot of classic movies. You might have noticed Vertigo spin by. That's an Alfred Hitchcock movie. That's a very, very famous old Alfred Hitchcock movie, in fact. But the group of movies... It's solid, but I wouldn't call it, you know, knock down, drag out good. I, I love Man in the Moon. You'll also notice it's kind of, you know, at least on the website, it's a little quirky. When you click on one thing you know, and click out, it always brings you back to the top of the screen. But take a look at this. Watch with Premium, a movie from 1936. Have you ever heard of Three Smart Girls? And, you know, this is... This is interesting. It's very, very interesting to see what they pick up as can't-miss premium TV. Now, their sports section doesn't look real impressive when you just take a look at it right now, but if you're a soccer fan, you're going to like this. There's uh, over 100 Premier League games available for the premium subscribers. So if Premier League soccer is your thing, you might just like this a lot. Now we're going to take a look at the channel section here. The channel section might end up being one of the most popular features on this service by far. Because what it does is the same kind of thing people are getting used to with things like the Roku channel or Pluto TV or Zumo. It's 24-7 feeds of various shows and subject matters. You'll see a lot of familiar faces here or familiar logos. Like, look, it has an office 24 7. And you can rewatch yesterday's news with Lester Holt. But it's got some 24 hour news stuff. It's got funny things like Fail Factory, you see. And, you know, then it's got these, you know, like, you see the 80s mixtape, you know, where you're going to have a smorgasbord of just random shows from the 80s. But this is a section that's supposed to be growing a lot over time. Right now, it looks like it's about you know maybe 30 channels, maybe less. But that's going to be a pretty big deal after a while because people love just being able to relax and watch shows. And you know if this has anything different than some of the others, it could be a really cool option for people going forward. Now there are other things to see here. We're gonna like we'll click here on Brave New World. This is one of their special originals. It's, uh, if you're into dystopia, you know this is one of those books that really laid the foundations for dystopias, and it has been worked in as a series here. Now I can't tell you for sure whether the story wraps up in the first season. Most of the time, TV shows 
aren't interested in having one season. You know, they want to get that hit and keep it going. So we'll see how that works out. You know, they hopefully they'll have the courage to tell the story and end it and not just keep going and going. The Capture is another one that is special to Peacock. And again, you'll see that some of them don't leave you any room to work with. Where's Waldo? There he is. Got a bit dry a little harder there, buddy. Got Cleopatra in space here. I guess that's about Cleopatra working with the ancient aliens to build the pyramids. Just kidding. But as you move on, I'm going to take a look at the kids section. You always have to have a kids section. Now this is one I thought was curious. No pun intended. Curious George is listed as a Peacock exclusive, and yet it has season 10, 11, 12, and 13. It's just, you know, like a, you, know, you would think that this was a brand new show, and I almost wonder if it's mislabeled. Because if it's a Peacock original, how could it be all the way to season 11 and 12? You'll see that every section makes other suggestions based on you know, things you might like. And you might also notice with Felix the Cat that just like some of these movies from the 1930s and shows from the 1950s, they're going way back. You know, the land before time. How about that? Did you know there's something like 20 of those movies? I wonder if they've got them all. You can watch the land before time, but Shrek, that's an exclusive for the premium. I found this interesting, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. I did not know that Sabrina the Teenage Witch was an old cartoon show at one point. You know, it's had, you know, two full series. You know, the old sitcom and then the Netflix show that just recently got canceled. And there's a version of He-Man that I have never run across. But the kid selections, they're not bad. They're not, it's not an extensive list, but it's, again, it's something out there for, for free that, you know, you don't have to, there he is, you don't have to really work too hard to get to it, you know? Though, your kids might get frustrated with things that are premium, and you, know, you might want to watch out, they might click on sign up for premium, and, you know, you might have your card in file, and boom, all of a sudden you're like, how did I get charged for this? But I think that this is a, a decent, a decent start. I, but the thing is, is that I'm not so sure that the Peacock app is altogether different than the NBC app that's already available on multiple platforms. There are some new, you know, there are some things that are different about it. There are some, you know, newer shows and things like that. But, you know, we're going to show you what the NBC app, say, on the NVIDIA Shield looks like already. What I wonder is, is Peacock going to do what HBO did? Is Peacock just going to replace NBC's apps everywhere else? Because one of the premium features here is being able to watch a show 24 hours after it was on the air. And that's a feature on the NBC app. You know, if, you, if you're like a cable subscriber or something like that. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that. But don't be real shocked if the NBC app ends up going away. But just to kind of make the point, let me show you what the NBC app looks like. Here, for instance, you see a section of live TV where you can flip through different channels that NBC owns. If you go to the home screen, you will see access to shows that NBC has. You might even recognize a lot of the ones that we showed you on the other one. There's classic shows, there's shows from this season, Saved by the Bell. So, what they're doing with Peacock is kind of an extension of what they did 
for the last couple of years. The difference is that the NBC app is sort of a TV everywhere. You know, if you have a TV shows, I'm sorry, if you have access to NBC through a cable provider or even, you know, some of the streaming providers, you can sign into the NBC app and access a number of things, including live feeds. It even has a movie section. The movies are based on things like that have come from Sci-Fi Channel or USA Network, things like that. So we'll show you here, like here's all, there's TV shows and movies. And so, you know, you got Fifty Shades Free, there's Jurassic Park, just like, you know, in the, the other case. This is also, like the movies here are also time. Yeah, they, they're not going to last forever. They're available while they're available. The TV shows are available a week after they show, unless it's something that's wrapped up the season. So, really, Peacock isn't a totally new idea. The things that make Peacock different are the new 24-7 feeds and sort of exclusivity of some of the content. But that is sort of the whole picture there. So Peacock, is it worth getting? I don't know. Uh, I don't know that I see enough out there right now. It could be that as it grows, it becomes an incredible service. But until then, maybe you just want to take a look, see what you can see for free, and... You know, if you find yourself so motivated by the, you know, exclusive things, you know, you want to you wanna really see Shrek on Peacock instead of just watching it on DVD or on some other form, go for it. Overall, I think that the free feeds is going to be very popular, and I think the ability to watch various shows on it are, is going to be nice. It's just a matter of, do people want... A reboot of Saved by the Bell or a reboot of Punky Brewster and things like that enough to pay five to ten dollars a month. We'll see. This hasn't been a real great time to launch a streaming service, I'll tell you that. Just ask HBO Max and Quibi and Lord knows. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please subscribe, share this video with your friends, and as always, I'm Ryan Downey, the streaming advisor. Stream on, my friends.